Hi, Floss Tube. Uh, it's Erin, Two Martini Stitcher. And I have been meaning for a while to film a little flip through of my Stitchy Planner because you guys see it pretty much every week in um, my regular Floss Tube videos, and I get lots of questions about it. And so I just thought it might be fun to pop in. This will be a pretty short video, but just do a little extra showing my planner, kind of flip through it, show you how I organize all of my stitchy stuff. So I'm gonna turn you guys around. Here we go. Whoop, that was close. Okay, so this is my planner. Um, I get asked a lot if it's a happy planner, which it sort of is. Sorry that there's a glare on the overhead lights, guys. It, it'll it go away once I open it, but it's a super great rainy day here. So the covers, so it is disc bound with the happy planner discs. These are the large size. Um, I got the discs and the punch at Michael's end of last year when they were having a sale. They were having a sale on a lot of the happy planner stuff and I got the rings and the punch. And then I got this set of covers. Um, I think it was three sets of covers actually off of Amazon. So it was just covers. I also picked up this little pen pouch that has the like binding edge so it clips in to the ring binders. So I got the covers from Amazon. I also got these dividers. I got two sets of dividers because I think they came eight in a pack. I'll link all of that stuff below um, so you can go get it. So I got dividers and wrote on them, um, but I didn't get an actual planner because all of the pages in mine, the base of it is, the, is Jen Lee's 24 hours of cross stitch planner, which is a printable. You purchase it on her Etsy shop and I will link that below as well. Okay. So that's the base of it. Um, I also have in here, you'll see towards the back, I have some whip cards that are printables from Annie Joyfield Stitcher and those are in her Etsy shop and I'll link them below. So the first little part of my planner is kind of yearly stuff. So this was one of the printables from Jen Lee's planner. She had a year long ABC challenge. I mean, I think hers consisted of trying like connecting 24 projects or 26 projects to the letters and aiming to finish 12 or 24 of them. I'm using this instead, you can see, to track the semi-stain stitchers challenge, which is alphabet soup. So they've been doing a year long challenge every two weeks, the letter moves to the next letter. So you can see I've been kind of planning out and this is totally me, right? Like I, I scratch out, I make multiple notes, but this is where I'm keeping track of what I'm doing for Semi-Sane Stitcher's Alphabet Soup. Um, you can see I, I'm, have, I'm struggling towards the end of the alphabet. So if you guys have any ideas, um, I did try to fit in to here. I was trying to do things that maybe weren't on my WIPCO board or things that I might not pull out otherwise. We'll see. But you can see I didn't have an O. And now after Rainy, I've got Olga in there. Um, this New York whip is kind of halfway UFO'd. So now it's going to be needle stands. But we're down here. Love my stitching. So that's the first page. The next one is my WIPCO board. And WIPCO is a group run by Jessie Marie. And I'll link the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch a group. 24 hours of cross stitch group and whip go below. Um, this is kind of like a bingo. You set it up at the beginning of the year with some of your whips. You set goals. You can see a lot of mine were finish. And then she calls two numbers a month. And so this is kind of where I'm keeping track of my whip go board. So you can see what I finished. That's these are called that haven't been completed yet. 
if they're filled in, they've been called and completed. And this one, Gobble Gob, is completed, but it hasn't been called yet. So that's my Whipgo board. And then this was just another printable. It was like kind of a monthly focus tracker. So I just fill this out. It's sometimes what was called for Whipgo, sometimes not. You could see, I mean, you guys probably remember if you've been around for a while that Hello Pumpkin was a focus in February. Um, this month I'm working on focusing a little bit on Welcome. And then Love My Stitching was called for Whipgo this month. So, um, and my goal on that is a finish. Probably won't happen this month, but it kind of gives me a reason to pull those out and pay attention to them. Okay, next is the master whip list. So like she had one, you know, like she included this. I printed out several pages. So at the beginning of the year, really at the very end of last year, I went through all my whips, did a whip parade, and listed out all the whips I was taking with me into 2020. So that's these. You can see where I've finished them. Um, they're highlighted. They have a finish date. These two, I couldn't, I hadn't started tracking last year. I didn't start writing down when I started things until May of last year. So these were kind of a question mark, but luckily they came up in my time hop. I had taken pictures of them. I'm sure for School of Magical Stitches. And so now I know what dates they were starting, were started. So you can see this page, this page, and you can see where I've, I, I am like getting some finishes from last year done. And then up to here. That was all the whips that I carried into 2020 from 2019. And then this is everything I've started this year. So this year seems to be the year that I start and finish little things. However, I'm also starting big things like farewell to anger, like cardinal points, like seeking refuge that I'm not finishing. Um, so this is what I started from the beginning of the year from here to May. And you can see I wasn't adding too much to my whip count, really. Um, and then Mania. And then Mania started. Um, so here's all of my May starts. I mean, some of them you can see I finished. January Basket was not a um, Mania start. I started that for Alphabet Soup. Um, but I also finished it now, so it's fine. It didn't count as a mania start, but everything else did other than these be wells. Um, so there's mania. And now I'm here in January or in, in January. Lord help us. Let's not start this year over. Um, I'm back at the beginning of June. So you can see this is the last one that I had printed. So... <laughs> What do we think? Am I going to have to print another page? Maybe. How many do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. I think we can hold it to eleven more starts this year. I doubt it. So that's the whip list. And then next year, when I like reset this for next year, I will do a clean whip list for 2021. So we'll start all over. Um, I think there was also this page for finishes, which I have not been using. I haven't been listing the finishes because literally everything is on this list, on the whip list. And you can see all my finishes. Um, I also have like, see, a little sticky note because I was going through making a list of all my Christmas and like holiday whips because I'm starting planning for Jolly July and I wanted to know how many holiday whips I had. So I've got two, four, six. I'm gonna work um, on these Advent ornaments and I'm gonna start seeing a sampler. So plans for July are starting to solidify. Okay, so that's all the year long stuff. And then we get into the months. And um, these are kind of all set up the same, all bought back here to June to where we are now. So the first page, is highlight so you can have some goals for the month. 
um, dates to remember. I would sometimes have dates to remember, like um, cardinal points. If there were month-long semi-sane stuff, I wanted to make sure. This was March, so I was wanted to remember to do my 555 birthday post in semi-sane. And then you can keep track of your new starts um, on that page as well. So there we go. And then this is a page that Jen has for tracking um, like your stitching time. Like either you're doing 24 minutes a day or you're trying to track 24 hours. I have one of these each month for my full coverage stitching. So I keep track of how many stitches I do every night on my full coverage. So this month you can see it's Harry Potter all month long because I've committed to the 100 hours for Volosano. Um, but most months it's like it'll say like this week was Farewell to Anger, this week was Harry Potter, this week was Farewell to Anger. And I'll sometimes keep like a running total. Like here you can see I keep track of where I hit each um, national park. I need to go back and look at that. I haven't been paying very good attention to the national park challenge. I may just bail on that because I'm not too fussed about going to all the national parks. So that's that. I've now started just the past couple months printing a second one of these calendars because I'm getting to the point where quite a few um, projects have set days that I work on them. So like Suffrage Act, I work on the third. Tingles, I start for Dark 13. My anniversary stitch is on the 18th. So I needed a better place to keep track of all of those. And then I've also started plugging in now that I'm getting to where I have whips with birthdays, excuse me. I'm plugging those in. So like today's June 11th and it's Autumn Drum's birthday. So I started Autumn Drum June, June 11th of last year. So it'll get worked on today. Knee high, I started on the 26th of last year. So I've started plugging those things in every month to this calendar. That kind of just gives me a good overview um, of what days, if there's, if I'm working on specific projects on specific days, uh, the acrostics are in this. You can get the acrostics on Jen's group without, um, purchasing the planner. She posts those in the group, but she just posts them like the month before. So like at the end of May, she posted the June acrostic. I have been really into the acrostics and doing the acrostics most months. Um, and then, like, I'll pull back and you can see there's February's. Um, I didn't do it for May because of mania. And now with, like, my calendar this way, like, these are the things that I would normally have plugged into the acrostic to make sure that I touch them. So honestly, I haven't filled out June's acrostic yet, and I'm not sure if I will be anymore. Um, we'll see. Maybe. I mean, they're in there, so I plugged them in for the whole year. So, And then the next page is, uh, is always just a blank um, dot grid page that I printed out. It was a freebie template that was an eight and a half by 11. Um, oh, I should have said this. This is the big size of Happy Planner. This is the eight and a half by 11, like it fits a normal eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So I tend to use this blank page for planning out like monthly challenges. So this is my plan for Enchanted Stitching Monthly Challenges. I mean, if you just need another piece of scrap paper, I'm gonna try to sit down guys. It's a long time, my back's starting to hurt. Um, so that's, that's what this is. And then we go into the weekly spreads. Um, and I printed one of these out, these, these weekly recaps for every week of the year. And so then you can put what the date is. It runs Sunday to Saturday. 
I tend to write out um, the weekly challenges. Here I'll make a note of what alphabet soup is. Um, and this is where I keep track of what I work on every day. So at the beginning of the week, I'll go in and plug things in like Suffrage Act, Quaker Geometric, like those were on my monthly calendar so that when I get to those days, I remember <laughs> I'm supposed to work on those. Um, and then I'll write whatever else I was working on. And I just keep a like posty note tab on my current week so that it's really easy to flip to the current week. So you can see I've already popped in a corn drum. Tomorrow is the day for Crosses of the Kingdom, my parents' anniversary piece, and tingles. So, and then I'll just write in whatever else I end up working on that day, which for sure will be Harry Potter book covers. I've been working on Welcome every day. Um, you can see I, I am one of those people that I do not, I don't have the longest attention span. So I work on for sometimes five projects a day, depending on what I'm bopping around on. So, oh, sorry guys, I'm getting too close and then pulling back. Um, so that's it. So all the months are kind of set up the same. I'm going to stand back up. So all the months are set up the same. And then when we get all the way back to December, then I have um, a section for my whips. And these are the whip cards that Annie Joyful Stitcher put together. So she sells them on her Etsy shop. The file is done so that you can print these um, on. The way the file is, is this section is duplicated. And then the whip section, this calendar, this section is duplicated. So you can print on like cardstock both sides and then when you cut it in half you would have this on the front and this on the back and you would have like recipe type cards for each of your whips so what I did was I just taped I cut I taped together I scanned and printed them out this way um, so that they would fit in my binder so all of my whips sort of <laughs> that I've touched this year so far have a page and they're in alphabetical order okay so you can see I'm only through March I need to go and do April and then make all the ones for me but what's cool I, what I love about this is that see I'm highlighting each day so I know how many days I'm working on it and you can keep all the information um, and then there's a space for pictures so it has the start date and then when you're done with it you'll have the finish and how many days you worked on it. And you can put, um, you know, notes. So Game of Swans was started for Long Dog Sal with Carolyn Zook. Um, Holly and Heart, you can see I've only worked on it two days so far this year. It'll come back out in July. Um, I bought that kitted from Stash Unload. Um, Irony. Um, that's finished. Actually, I should move that to the finish section. Um, and so then you can see I have here, I just put a tab. So these here are all current whips. All of these are current whips. These are ones that have been finished this year. So here's like apples and sage, French kitchen collection. Everything's called for. And this was a club kit from Inspired Needle. I started it, here's when I finished it. I don't know how many days I worked on it 2019 because I didn't keep that information, but I worked on it 10 days this year. See, cool, isn't that awesome? Be happy. I don't have pictures for all of them, um, but this will be a fantastic record. Like, look, Hello Pumpkin. Focused on that in February. Um, mystery Sal that I failed at. Yeah, because I didn't keep up with that, Sal. Um, but I worked on that 30 days this year. Don't know how many in 2019. So these are really fun, and I thought would just be a great record of all my projects. Um, 
as you can see, I definitely need to catch up. I kind of, I had been doing like once a month, sitting down and going through um, and updating these, but I clearly only went through March and need to do April and May. And I'll show you um, what I do is when I have, like I just go week by week. <laughs> I just go week by week and I look at what I worked on each day and I update their whip card and then I put a check mark at the top so I know that I've done that week, that that week's already been updated. So you can see March is done, but I clearly need to sit down and do April and May. So I love those whip cards. Those are super fun. Um, and I just think would be an awesome record of um, all my whips. And then the very last section is just extra sheets that she had, so she has a sheet for marathon planning. If you're doing 24 hours of cross-stitch marathon weekend, she has a tracker sheet for marathon weekend, so you can track every hour what project you're working on. I love that she has a mood. <laughs> um, there's a totally blank calendar that you can use to make up for anything. And then there were a bunch of these just for fun pages. I didn't print all of them, but I printed some of them that I thought were kind of basic, and I ended up using a couple of these for mania planning, as you can see. So these were my foreshore mania starts that clearly, before mania started, got some changes, had some changes, and then these were the list of my possible mania starts, which also had some changes. So, and then we're to the back. So that's it, guys. That is my cross-stitch planner. Um, Caveat, this is the only area of my life that is this organized. Mm, I would say the work, my, my work stuff for the studio is pretty close to this organized. But if you guys are like, holy moly, I could never be that organized. Um, just know that my whole life is not this organized. See, look, here's the rest of my dining room table. Not nearly as organized. Those are curtains that got replaced that I need to do something with and have been sitting there for a week and a half. Cross stitch planner, little oasis of organization. And it keeps me on track. And otherwise, I would never remember what I worked on from one day to the next. So, anyhow, I hope that was helpful and maybe inspirational for. Some people maybe gave you some good ideas of ways that um, might be helpful to organize your things as well. If our brains work the same, my brain works in a very weird way, I think, sometimes. So, but hopefully that was helpful. And um, I will link everything I talked about in the description box. And hope you guys are having a great stitchy week. And I will be back on Sunday with my regular floss tube update. Bye.